Hi, welcome to Tagami Vision. I'm Phil Tagami. Uh, as part of our show this month, we're going to be focusing on individuals that are seeking the at-large council seat in the city of Oakland. And with me today is candidate Charles Pine, Oakland resident. Mr. Pine, thanks for taking time with us today. Great to be here. Um, tell us a little bit about your, yourself and uh, how long have you lived in Oakland? I've been here over 20 years. I uh, lived in the same Allendale home all that time. Uh, I uh, worked in the infotech industry in 1995. We had a problem uh, on the corner, so I co-founded our Neighborhood Crime Prevention Council. And I'll tell you, back then, if someone had said, uh, Charlie, do you realize in 13 years you'll be running for city council, I would have said you're crazy. But uh, there's where we are today. Wow. So uh, what do you see Oakland's most pressing problem as being? Well, I think that's a no-brainer. I think we all agree that there's a lack of peaceful neighborhoods in Oakland. We really have to deal with the public safety issue. Right. So uh, what would your solutions be? If you were elected tomorrow, how would you address uh, public safety in Oakland? Well, uh, I've been working on this issue for some time. In 2005, I co-founded Oakland Residents for Peaceful Neighborhoods. About that time, city activists uh, put together a couple of facts. You know, one is we're rated the fourth most dangerous city in the country. You know, some people say fifth. But anyway, we have that on one hand. On the other hand, we really have half a police department in Oakland. All the other major cities, Atlanta, Boston, Cleveland, St. Louis, etc., they have between 35 and 45 police for every 10,000 residents. Oakland has 18. So 35 to 45, 18. Now, it just seems like common sense that we need to make a priority out of getting an adequate sized police force. So plank number one in my three-point program is get 1,100 officers in this city up from the 730 that we have today. So a lot of the debate regarding crime reduction, there's two camps. There seems to be the diversion camp, that we need more programs and divert at-risk people from crime, uh, as well as repeat offenders and recidivists. And then there's the suppression camp. So you would put yourself in the suppression camp, more where we need more uh, boots on the ground, as they say, working, the, uh, going after the people and going to the places that we think crime occurs and we know crime occurs. Well, I'm not a law and order guy, you know, from an ideological stance. But, you know, even to get people into the programs, you need both uh, some encouragement on one hand and you need a little bit of a push on the other hand. So when we have more officers on the street, you know, we have a number of programs that are actually underutilized right now. Uh, the officers will encourage them to, to get into those programs and the greater presence of officers will help make that happen. Yes, we have heard a lot of talk, you know, about we need a comprehensive approach, we need balance between those two sides. But what's happened since 2004, for example, when the voters gave City Hall all that Measure Y tax money that City Hall asked for? Well, we've poured millions of dollars extra into social programs, but we've actually had fewer police since we passed Measure Y than we had when Measure Y was written. Well, you know, you don't have to pay for fewer police. You can have fewer police for free. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your policymaking experience. Um, have you ever been involved in uh, taking a uh, program or policy through the city council process? Well, um, I've worked on some issues before uh, that have to do uh, with public safety and also those that are on other things. Uh, I've worked on uh, some of the projects, the big developer projects in my area and joined with the neighbors and uh, taken that through the planning commission. We have one we're working on right now at uh, High Street and MacArthur. Terrible proposal and we're trying to get that one modified to where it's acceptable. Um, measure N, the library measure, I, I was one of the leaders of the opposition to that. You know, that was a $148 million bond measure, most of the money to go for a palace library downtown instead of the branches out where people need them. And thank goodness that didn't pass, because if we had another $148 million of debt with the credit markets doing what they're doing today, uh, we'd be in a much worse situation. Um, have you served on any boards and commissions here in Oakland? Well, you know, I've kind of been uh, a neighborhood activist, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm a leader in Oakland Residents for Peaceful Neighborhoods. And one of the things we do, we have a very active website, ORPN.org, and I'll tell you, you can get a lot of information just by reading the reports that come to the City Council. They are published on the web, and we read them and we find amazing things, you know, like the number of gardeners this city has is 20 less than what it had in 1989. They had 82 then, they got 63 now. So, you know, in the meantime, the number of positions in this city went up by 557. 
So we need to get back to basic services. So the real general question, then, Oakland in the right direction or in the wrong track? Well, I think Oakland's got great potential, but I think we really need to solve this first problem, which is this public safety problem. You know, when the roof leaks in 15 different places, you don't talk about what sofa you're going to get. You don't talk about what kind of carpet, what color carpet you're going to get. You fix the roof, and that's what we need to do, and that's why we need to get at least 1,100 officers. That, we need to make a commitment to that and lay out a multi-year plan that will do it. Um, tell me about your view of the city council, uh, your, potentially your future colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, and the mayor. So if you were to rate the city council and their performance, and if you were to rate the mayor and his performance, where we, uh, either on a grade or on a number scale, where would you put it? Well, the city council, uh, I mean, they, they have to show up for the meetings, and they do, but I, I must say I think that they could be spending their time on the really crucial issues. Uh, I mean, how many meetings are there? where the public safety issue is either not discussed or if it is it's a very minor aspect of it that gets discussed like you know uh, how long can people park uh, their dog at a parking meter or something like that uh, i think that if uh, we elect some people who are bringing new priorities onto the council uh, that that will be a message to the existing council members and i'll work with anyone so that's how i'd, I'd take my approach to the council Okay. Uh, evaluation of the mayor? Uh, well, if I were going to have to give Mayor Dellums a grade, uh, I guess the first thing is uh, some people would say he's had a truancy problem. Uh, you know, where is he sometimes? That is uh, changing for the better, I think. Um, you know, back in, and he does uh, show potential for working with us, and, and of course we want to work with him. In September of last year, he was saying, I don't think the people of Oakland want hundreds more police. Uh, in October, he was at a community meeting in North Oakland, Jane Bruner hosted, uh, and we were there and we raised the 1100 police issue and instead of dismissing it, he said, if you want to have that debate, let's have that debate. And then in his State of the City address, he again said he was going to call a summit on police staffing and related issues. So I'm looking forward to that. I wish things would move faster. They, they do move too slowly, I think. But, uh, you know, if, if we can uh, make some progress on that, then that's what it's all about. Um, decline to state, Democrat, Republican? I'm registered as decline to state. And McCain, Obama, or Clinton? Obama. Obama. Um, so looking now at um, uh, the budget. Mm -hmm. So the city's facing another budget challenge. Uh, in light of no new revenue or revenue sources, uh, what programs get cut or what steps are taken? Well, I think it is a question of priorities. I think that, you know, we can have uh, public safety and peaceful neighborhoods. We can have basic services and we can have clean government with the money that we're collecting right now. Um, I don't think the problem is so much in the overtime story that came out recently, for example, but I do think that we have an awful lot of staff, and I'm not sure exactly what they're doing at some of the upper echelons, um, and uh, that's something to be examined. I think that when the uh, city auditor comes in with a report, as Ms. Ruby did a, a month or two ago, that we could uh, welcome it and work with her and look at it instead of uh, getting so defensive right away about it. Um, and another issue that I think we need to look at is the redevelopment districts. You know, we've added a lot into redevelopment districts, and when you do that, tax revenue is capped as far as public services, basic services go. Instead, the revenue gets diverted into other things. And I think Oakland needs to re-examine that and, and think where we might uh, retrench on that. Okay. Uh, looking at uh, the race as an you know, overall race, if you were not in the race, is there a candidate for the at-large seat that you would endorse? Well, I would have others? endorsed you, Phil, but you said a few months ago you weren't running, so <laughs> I can't do that. Well, actually, we had an earlier interview where I basically uh, the uh, interviewee said that uh, politics is not for sissies, so I officially became a sissy. Oh. <laughs> so uh, on that note... Uh, well, I will answer it a little more seriously. Yeah. Um, if I weren't in the race, uh, you know, I think... The activists uh, who work with me and who basically ask me to run, we'd be going around, we'd say, 
Will you commit to our Peaceful Neighborhoods program? Will you commit to this minimum adequate police staffing? And I think that, uh, you know, if we could have some good serious discussions with a candidate, that would probably be the deciding factor right. on whether or not we'd endorse someone. Sure. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and coming and joining us. Um, we're going to be doing another forum uh, specifically on crime reduction and specifically on retail attraction and business retention, uh, and we're going to be putting panels together. So if you're so inclined, uh, maybe you come back as the Honorable Charles Pine uh, at that point in time. But uh, good luck in your race, and uh, thanks for coming on. Well, Honorable or Ordinary Citizen, I'll be happy to be here. Appreciate your time. Thank thanks. you.